Dafyomi tractate Baba Basra, page 122b, top of the page is the word ksiv. Sarach u ksiv cheres. Amar Rabbi Elazar. Betechila perosea kecheres. Ulebasov perosea masrichin. Veikete Amri batechila masrichin. Ulebasov kecheres. The Gemara interjects, it is written concerning Joshua's burial, and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Serah, Joshua 24.30. And is written, and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Cheres, Judges 2.9. Why is the same change? Why is the name changed? Rabbi Elazar says initially its fruits were as dry as clay, and ultimately its fruits were so plump that they were spoiling. And they, and there are those, I mean, Masrich literally means smelling bad, but okay, spoiling, yeah, okay. And there are those who say the opposite. Initially, the fruits were spoiling prematurely, and ultimately, they last as long as clay without spoiling. Okay. Kalev dechziv vayitnu lechalev es chevron ka'ashir diber Moshe vayomrish bisham es shlosha b'nei ha'anak chevron ir miklat havi amar abaya parva ha parva ha parava dechziv v'es sedei ha'ir v'es chetzereha naznu lechalev Ben Yefune v'achuzato. Caleb also received his portion directly from God, and not through the lottery, as it is written. And they gave Hebron to Caleb. And they gave Hebron to Caleb as Moses had spoken, and he drove out from there the three sons of the giant. Judges 1. 20. The Gemara asks about this verse. The Chevron was a city of refuge that belonged to the priests, as described in the book of Joshua 21 and 13. How could it have been given to Caleb? Abaye said its outskirts, Par Varaha, only the fields and vineyards lying beyond the city limits were given to Caleb. As it is written, but the fields of the city and the villages thereof, they gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for his possession. Joshua 21.12 And that's the end of that, New Mishnah. The Mishnah says both the son and the daughter of the deceased are included in the halachot of inheritance, but the difference is that the firstborn takes a double portion of the property of the father and he does not take a double portion of the property of the mother. And another difference is that the daughters are sustained from the property of the father after he dies, as it is a mandatory condition of their mother's marriage contract that they are to be sustained even before the estate is dispersed to the children, but the daughters are not sustained from the property of the mother which is all inherited by the sons. Gemara, the Talmud says, the Gemara analyzes the Mishnah. My echad haben echad habas l'nachala, i lemediyarti gi hadadi hatnan ben kodim l'bas, kol yotzi yerecho, shal ben kodim l'bas. The Gemara analyzes the Mishnah. What is meant by the first clause of the Mishnah, both the son and the daughter of the deceased are included in the halacha of inheritance. If we say that they inherit together, didn't we learn in a Mishnah 115a, a son precedes a daughter? Additionally, 
all descendants of a son precede a daughter. It is clear that a daughter does not inherit together with a son. Simon is Nafsham. Nafsham is a mnemonic for the names of the sages in the in the following discussion. It's Nachman, Papa, Ashi, and Mar. Amr of Nachman Bar Yitzchak. Hachi Kamar Ela Ben Echad Habas. Not Lin Bar Roy Kibbe Mochzak. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak says, this is what the mission is saying. Both the son and the daughter take an inheritance the property due to their father as they would take in inheritance the property they had in his possession. Ha'anami tanina benos tzalafchot natlu shlosha chalakim benachala chelik avihen shahaya motzoi mitzrayim v'chelko imechav benechse chefer The Gemara questions this explanation we already learned this as well in Mishnah 116b. Tzalafcha's daughters took three portions of land in the inheritance of Eretz Yisrael, their father's portion that he received because he was among those who left Egypt and his portion that he received with his brothers in the property of Hefer, their father, although Tzalafcha predeceased his father, and never was in possession of the inheritance from Hefer, and an additional portion that he received from Hefer because he was the firstborn. It is already taught in that Mishnah that property due to the deceased is inherited in the same manner as property possessed by the deceased. The ode, my Ella, and furthermore, if the explanation of the mission is as stated by Rav Nachman, what is meant by the phrase, but the difference is that the firstborn son takes a double portion of the property of the father, and he does not take a double portion of the property of the mother. According to Rav Nachman's explanation, what is the contrast between the two clauses in the Mishnah? Amr of Papa, Ella Amr of Papa, Hachi Kamar. Echad haben, ve echad habas, not lean, chelak bim bichora. Rather, of Papa said, this is what the Mishnah is saying. Both the son and the daughter of the deceased take a portion of the firstborn. Hanami tanina, ve shehia bechor notel shnei chalakim. The ode, my Ella, the Gemara questions this explanation. We already learned this in a Mishnah as well, um, in 116b, which ex- which explains the third portion taken by the daughters of Tzalavchad, and they took an additional portion that he received from Hefer, as he was a firstborn, and the firstborn takes two portions of inheritance from his father. And furthermore, if the explanation of the Mishnah is as stated by Rav Papa, what is meant by the phrase, but the difference is that the firstborn son takes a double portion of the property of the father, and he does not take a double portion of the property of the mother. According to this, explanation as well. The first clause of the mission has nothing to do with inheriting from the mother. Ella, Amr Vashi, Hachi Kamar. Ella, Bain, Bain Habanim, Ve'echad Bas, Bain Habanos, Im Amar Irash, Kol Nechasai, Devarav Kayamin. Rather, Rav Ashi said, this is what the mission is saying, with regard to both a son among the sons, and a daughter among the daughters. If the father says, this particular child shall inherit all my property, his statement stands. A father can do so for any one son, or when there are no sons, 
for any one daughter. Kiman, Kirav Yochanan ben Baroka, Hakatani le lekaman. Rav Yochanan ben Baroka Omer, Im Amar al mi shira oili arsho, Devar of Kayamin, al mi sheino ra oili arsho, and Devar of Kayamin. The Gemara asks, in accordance with whose opinion does Rav Ashi say this? Is it in accordance with the opinion of Rav Yochanan ben Baroka? The Gemara challenges, but the Mishnah teaches this later, 130a, as Rabbi Yochanan ben Baroka says, if one said about another who is fit to inherit from him, that the named individual should inherit all his property, his statement stands, but if one said it about another who is unfit to inherit from him, his statement does not stand. It is not reason, is it? It is not reasonable to say that this Mishnah is stating the same halacha that is recorded in the later Mishnah in the name of Rabbi Yochanan ben Broka. Bechi tema kastam lan Rabbi Yochanan ben Broka stam ve'achar kach machlokes he who stam ve'achar kach machlokes in halacha kistam. And if you would say that the Tana here taught us an unattributed Mishnah, in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan ben Baroka, in, in order to demonstrate that his opinion is accepted as halacha. This would not establish the halacha in accordance with his opinion. The reason is that this would be an instance of an unattributed Mishnah, and, hereafter, and thereafter a Mishnaic dispute concerning the same matter as in the later Mishnah, there is a Tano who disagrees with the ruling of Rabbi Yochanan ben Broka, and in an instance of an unattributed Mishnah, and thereafter a Mishnahic dispute, the halacha is not in accordance with the unattributed Mishnah. The ode, my Elah. And furthermore, if the explanation of the Mishnah is as stated by Rav Ashi, what is meant by the clause, but the difference is that the Firstborn son takes a double portion of the property of the father, and he does not take a double portion of the property of the mother, according to this explanation as well. The first clause of the mission has nothing to do with inheriting from the mother. El Amar Mar Bar Ravashi Hachikamar El Ben Bechad Habas. Rather, Mar Bar Rav Ashi said, This is what the Mishnah is saying. Both the son and the daughter are equal in their rights, both with regard to the property of the mother and with regard to the property of the father. Sons and daughters can inherit it from, can inherit from either fathers or mothers. But the differences are that the firstborn son takes a double portion of the property of the father, and he does not take a double portion of the property of the mother, and that the daughters are sustained from their father's estate before it is dispersed to the children, but they are not sustained from the property of their mother. Tana Rabbanan, pishnayim pishnayim Ata Omer Pishnaim Kehat, O Eno Ella Pishnaim, Bechol Nechasim, Vidinhu. The sage is taught in a Brita when the verse states, But he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the hated, by giving him a double portion of all that he has. Deuteronomy 21 17. This means that the firstborn receives double the property received by any other one inheritor. The Brita analyzes this statement. Do you say, the firstborn receives double the property received by any one inheritor, or rather is it a double portion of all the property, such that the firstborn receives two-thirds of the entire estate, which is twice the portion left for the other inheritors to divide between themselves. The bride suggests, and this question can be resolved through a logical inference. <laughs>